In this video, we're going to be talking about the interesting history of the Jehovah's Witnesses, one of the many, many hundreds, probably even thousands of religions that came about in the 1800s, around the time of Mormonism, Seventh-day Adventism, and many other religions that came about all claiming to be from God, all claiming to be restored true Christianity, the only true Christian faith. Each of them has very interesting and different beliefs than the other, but they all claim to be the true Church of Jesus. In this case, we're going to be talking about the Jehovah's Witnesses that was started by an 18-year-old boy named Charles Taz Russell, who was against creeds and against religion and against organized religion. And we're going to see that he started just a simple Bible study, but it was his successor, Joseph Rutherford, that would take that little Bible study and turn it into an organized religion with many different beliefs, door-to-door evangelization, and more. So let's get started. Charles Taz Russell was actually a confused Christian. He was a Presbyterian by birth. His parents preached hell a lot, and he didn't like the teaching of hell, and he really wasn't sure about the authority of the Bible, and he had a lot of doubts and insecurities about the faith. And one of his biggest hang-ups was on hell. And he tried to prove his own faith once, and he got in a debate with an agnostic, and instead of converting the agnostic, he himself got converted and ended up abandoning Christianity altogether. He had grown up going to a congregational church and still had many doubts. But after this discussion, he left the faith for a long time and really wasn't sure what to believe. He kind of lost faith in systems and religions, in the Bible, and many different aspects of religion like that. But even though he was skeptical, he continued to search, which is noble. And he came across a man named William Miller who started the Adventist movement, and he liked what William Miller had to say. Despite the rest of Christianity teaching that there was a hell, William Miller thought that there is no hell, and the Bible says there's no hell. And so he held on to William Miller's teachings and had a great connection with him, started studying under him, learning from him. And over a period of time, he was shaped by William Miller. But after a certain amount of time, William Miller tried to predict the end of the world. He failed, and his whole sect broke apart into different sects, one of them being the Jehovah's Witnesses. One of them would become the Seventh-day Adventists, two of the religions that share very similar beliefs. Interestingly, William Miller predicted that in 1873 to 1874, Jesus would come back invisibly. And this would start Charles Taz Russell's obsession with trying to predict the end of the world and trying to predict predict the second coming of Christ. It was at this time that he started a small Bible study, and they started to try to study the Bible and get some things out of it. And even though he did not have a high school diploma, he'd never finished high school, never finished college, didn't have any higher education degrees, never studied any biblical language, he began to call himself a pastor. (laughs) And he started to shepherd people in his churches. And I don't know why he called himself a pastor, but he did. And nobody credible actually would consider him a pastor because he had no education or training outside of what he taught himself. And this would lead to a whole host of problems. After the year 1900, his wife ended up leaving him and ended up suing him and bringing all of these women into court saying that he was cheating with other parishioners and all these women were brought in to testify. And somehow he survived the shocking embarrassment of all of that, the scandal of all of that. And he started to try just like William Miller and the Adventists, to predict the end of the world. He said that Christ would come in 1874, but of course, Christ didn't come in 1874, so he said Christ came invisibly. Yes, invisibly in 1974, but the true end of the world would be in 1914. And all Jehovah's Witnesses were waiting for the end of the world. And if you were a good Jehovah's Witnesses, you were waiting for 1914. And then after 1914, You were still waiting (laughs) because the world didn't actually end. But he said that the Protestants and the Catholics, the Mother Harlot Church, were going to join together. The Protestants and the Catholics were going to become one church, and they were going to fight against Jesus, and Jesus was going to destroy them all. But of course... I'm a Catholic, I know many Protestants, we're all still here, and none of that came to pass. And we have a whole video on the false predictions of the end of the world by the Jehovah's Witnesses, which you can check out here or at the end, we will link it below. And uh, you can see that the biggest thing, the biggest problem with the Jehovah's Witnesses is their many failures to predict the end of the world. 1874, 1975, 1925, 1918, 1914, and many other times as well. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 18, that if you predict something to happen in the name of the Lord, and it doesn't come to pass, 
you are a false prophet. That's why, as we're going to see in a few minutes, once 1975 came, hundreds of thousands of Jehovah's Witnesses would leave the church forever. As if getting divorced wasn't enough and predicting the end of the world several times to happen and failing wasn't enough, he also got charged with profiteering because he was selling miracle wheat. And he was selling this wheat to his parishioners and saying it was miraculous wheat. It grew faster and more healthy than all other wheat. And he actually was charged for that. One wonders <laughs> if there was some sort of a con artist in this man. But fr from the outside looking in, there are many things about Charles Taz Russell, even his pyramidology and his occultism and the way he tried to predict the end of the world are very sketchy and very shady. And he ended up making a Studies in Scripture, which was a seven-volume work, a commentary on the Bible. And he himself said that you cannot understand the Holy Scriptures if you don't read his commentary, Studies in Scriptures. Anyone who tries to study the Bible on their own will always be left in the dark. He said a lot of interesting things, and I suppose that's why the Jehovah's Witnesses have basically all but written him off. If you look at the Watchtower website, he only has a few paragraphs. I mean, their founder only has a few paragraphs. And maybe that's because his successor, Joseph Rutherford, also known as the Judge, Judge Rutherford, he basically changed almost everything, all the theology, teaching, and doctrine that Russell had given, he changed most of it. And his successor, Nathan Knorr, changed most of his teachings, theology, and doctrine. So over the many decades that the Jehovah's Witnesses existed, their theology and doctrine just kept changing and changing and changing based on, well, who the next president was. I mean, if Russell was the person, as Jehovah's Witnesses state, that kind of restored God's true church, if, you know, the truth was lost and we needed to get back to biblical teaching, and Russell was the one to do that, and Russell was the man chosen by God, well, why are we changing Russell's teachings? And why is Rutherford doing anything to change that? Does he claim to know more than Pastor Russell? Pastor Russell? And does Norm know more than Rutherford? And so on and so on? I mean, what? If it's the true church, and God is truly speaking through the Jehovah's Witnesses, which is supposed to be the secret slave of God, the, the basically the mouthpiece of God, then why does truth change so much? The same thing happens in the Mormon church. Constantly changing. Doctrines are changing. Teachings are changing. But if God... I mean, to me, it seems like God's changing his mind. If God says something, it shouldn't change. Not if it's a doctrine, not if it's like a core theological teaching if, from God. It won't change. But it was Joseph Rutherford, the second president of the Jehovah's Witnesses, who was the man who took a simple Bible study and transformed it into an organized religion with teaching. He was the one who started the door-to-door -door evangelization ministry. He's the one who started cars driving down the streets with record players on top, announcing the good news and many other things that Pastor Russell would have been shocked and appalled with because he took a simple Bible study and turned it into an organized religion, something that Russell was against, and even Jehovah's Witnesses today claim to be against, except that's exactly what they've become, an organized religion. Joseph Rutherford himself even tried to continue predicting the end of the world after Russell. He predicted the end of the world to happen several times as well, and it didn't happen, especially in 1925. That was the big year, and many distinct predictions of the end of the world took place, and they're all over their watchtowers, awake in different magazines and books, but 1925 came, 1925 went, and we're still here. And so in 1925, Rutherford said that he made a house, and it was called Beth Siram, House of Princes. And you can see, I mean, it's in California, but he said all the Old Testament prophets were going to come and live in this house. And this was a testimony to the world that well, the end of the world was near. But of course, it didn't happen. The house is still there. And he himself predicted the world to end falsely also. In 1961, the Jehovah's Witnesses made their own Bible translation called the New World Translation. And people wanted them to reveal who translated the Bible, but they refused. And I guess it's because they had four people who had no credentials whatsoever in translating the Bible. It came out later that four people translated the Bible, but none of them had any scholarly 
work. None of them had any training in biblical languages. In fact, the only person, Frederick Franz, one of the four people, the, is the only one who actually studied Greek. And he only took two years of Greek, and the Greek that he studied wasn't even Koine Greek. It wasn't biblical Greek, the Greek that the Bible was written in. So literally all four people who translated the Jehovah's Witness Bible had zero training in biblical languages as opposed to, say, the New American Bible, which had 40 different translators, all of them, each and every one of them, had doctorates in the biblical languages. So we can see how sketchy the New World Translation is, which is why nobody uses it and scholars don't take it seriously. It's basically just a paraphrase of what the Bible already says, but they change countless passages to fit their preconceived theology, especially changing passages on the divinity of Christ. And it was in 1975, right after this, that they predicted the end of the world to come, and Jehovah's Witnesses were selling their homes, and they didn't come. The world did not end again and again and again. They predicted the world to end, and it didn't end. Hundreds of thousands of Jehovah's Witnesses would leave the Watchtower forever and never return. And even many people in their governing body, which is their hierarchy, they were doubting the Watchtower as well. They were saying, that we don't think this is true because look at all the problems. Your chronology is all wrong. And even the, the president, his nephew was excommunicated. They call it disfellowshipped from the organization for doubting after the end of the world. And he came and wrote a huge book exposing the whole organization, their false teachings, their false doctrines, and so on. But many high up, high ranking Jehovah's Witnesses were kicked out and or left uh, on their own initiative. And we're going to be interviewing somebody and former witness on this channel very soon. And he was in the higher echelons of the Watchtower as well. And he was in the history department in the research department. And he was responsible for researching the doctrines of the Jehovah's Witnesses so they could put it in their writings, their books, their magazines and such. And he said the more he researched and the more he studied, the more he realized that the Jehovah's Witness doctrines can't be substantiated. It's just not true. It's not his historical, and no Christian believes that. And so he ended up leaving along with many, many other people in the Jehovah's Witness religion. Frederick Franz uh, would come in and become the president of the Jehovah's Witnesses, and he was the first one to graduate college. I mean, the Jehovah's Witnesses have a long history from the late 1800s until present day, but so many things have changed. It's gone through so many evolutions. So many of their core teachings and doctrines have changed. But many of the doctrines uh, the core doctrines are not even Christian. They don't match up with the rest of Christianity. They don't match up with the earliest Christians. And as we're going to see in our following video to this, we're going to look at the beliefs and teachings of the Jehovah's Witnesses. We're going to see that they don't even believe in basic theology that most Christians believe. Like, they say that Jesus is not God. Most Christians say Jesus is God. They say that Jesus is Michael the Archangel. We say that we can't wait to go to heaven when we die. They say only 144 thousand people can go to heaven and everyone else has to come down to a perfect paradise on earth. They don't accept blood transfusions because they believe drinking blood is evil. So we're going to be discussing these in the next video on the beliefs and teachings of the Jehovah's Witnesses, but this was a very short history on the Jehovah's Witnesses. Pastor Russell, who founded the church and ended up getting divorced, predicting the end of the world several times and failing, selling miracle wheat and being charged for it. I mean, many other crazy things that have happened in the history of the Jehovah's Witnesses that most witnesses don't even know about. And they continually try to make converts today and bring people into their sect that was only founded not by Jesus, but founded in the late 1800s. Jesus' church was started 2,000 years ago, and you can trace its history back 2,000 years. Thank you so much for watching this short history of the Jehovah's Witnesses. If you have any questions on this, please feel free to put it in our comments section below. If you are a former witness or if you are a Jehovah's Witness and you have any comments on this, feel free to put it in the comments section below. If you like this video, please kiss that like button. Give it a kiss and share it, please, so that people can know the truth. So many Jehovah's Witnesses are misled, are led astray, and they're not allowed to read books from other religions. They're not allowed to do actual research except what the people upstairs 
upstairs tell them. So many of them are confused. Many of them just don't know. And they've never been told what the history of, of their religion is and why their beliefs don't match up with the Bible or historic Christianity. So if you could help share this video, get it out there. Maybe you know a Jehovah's Witness. Send it to them. They probably won't watch it, but send it to them anyways. They evangelize you. Go ahead and evangelize them. You have permission from us. And uh, if you like this video, please share it. Please like it. All that sort of thing. Subscribe to our channel. If you would like to support our ministry, you can see our PayPal and our Patreon below. You can also follow us on Facebook, our podcast, our Instagram, and everything else is below. Thank you so much for watching. Tune in for the next part, and God bless.